Hey, what's up guys? Chris Trini here for Chris Core Productions. We are in October and Halloween is getting closer. And because of that, I decided to make a series of short videos along with some tutorials that have a little bit of a darker tone and a Halloween theme to them. Now we started off with a creepy video of things moving around on their own in an attic. And then we followed it up with a tutorial showing how to create that paranormal activity, as well as a very simple to do, yet very convincing ghost effect. Today and in the following days, we're breaking down some shots from a very short short that I posted this past Sunday. And if you haven't seen it yet, go ahead and check it out because we're going to be talking about it all throughout this video and in the following videos as well. But anyways, we're creating this effect right here. So we're replacing someone's eyes, making them demonic and black and evil while still maintaining reflections and realism to a human eyeball, which isn't really human anymore. But anyways, before we jump into the technicals, I want to point out that all the techniques and the tricks that we're exploring in today's video can be applied for a wide range of effects. So you're not necessarily limited to creating this particular type of effect. Anyways, with that being said, let's fire up After Effects and let's get started. All right, so we have my face in After Effects staring uncomfortably back at you. And right now I'm just adding up all the elements that made up for the final effect, just to give an idea of uh, what was involved in, in this whole overall uh, beautiness over here. We're gonna be focusing only on the eyes and that is because once we learn how to do that, you pretty much know how to do everything else. It's just a matter of getting a good track and then once you have that, you can just add as many details as you want. So I'm gonna start from scratch. I'm gonna grab my original clip and bring it into a new composition. And I'm just gonna trim the excess by uh, shrinking my work area and then trimming the composition length to that work area. All right, so the best tool for the job is Mocha. So normally you would select the clip, go on the animation and track in Mocha AE. Unfortunately, uh, Mocha is a bit fussy when it comes to formats. As you're gonna see in a second here, once it fires up, um, if I click on it, it's not recognizing my clip at all. So I'm gonna hit cancel and close this out. And I'm just gonna show you a way around this issue. So what I'm gonna do is create an image sequence of this clip. So I'm gonna go under File, Export, Add to Render Queue, and then we're gonna change just a few settings, change it from QuickTime to a TIFF sequence. So everything else should be fine. Make sure it's just the RGB. We don't really need any alpha channel for this one. Click OK, and then uh, select a folder that you wanna export your image sequence to. Now keep in mind that it's gonna export a bunch of pictures, so make sure you put it in a folder where um, they can be contained. So once you do that, hit save and then click render and it's going to start here. So I'm going to open up finder and uh, find that folder where we, uh, where we saved it at. And you can see what's creating. It's pretty much creating a picture for every frame. That's what an image sequence is. And um, Mocha seems to like these a lot better than a um, MP4, uh, MOV, uh, whatever format your, your camera is shooting at. So once we do that, we need to bring that image sequence back into After Effects. So I'm gonna go and find that folder, select the first frame, then make sure that the TIFF sequence uh, checkbox is selected. And then once you have that, click open, and this is gonna bring that image sequence into After Effects. Now we have another issue. If you look at the top here, our original clip has a frame rate of about 24 frames per second. But when we click on our image sequence, it's 30 frames a second. Now that could be a huge issue when it comes to tracking, so we need to fix that. I'm not sure why it does that, it's kind of weird, but what we're gonna do to fix it is right click on that image sequence, go to interpret footage, main, and then where it says assume this frame rate, we're gonna change it from 30 to 23.976, or whichever frame rate you're trying to match it with your footage. So once we do that, um, you can see that it's, uh, it's fine now, we're ready to work with this. So I'm gonna drag this image sequence into a new composition. And now we pretty much have the same thing that we started with, but just in a different format, which Mocha seems to like better. So with this image sequence selected in our timeline, we're gonna go do the same thing, go under animation, track in Mocha AE. And now this time, once it loads up, we can click on it and we can see that it's, uh, it's reading all the information correctly. The only thing that we gotta change is this uh, start frame put it to zero so that it starts from the very beginning. And then everything else seems okay, so we're gonna click okay, and we have our image sequence or our clip into uh, Mocha, and we're ready to track. And fortunately for us, Mocha is an extremely easy tool to use while still being very powerful. I'm gonna focus on this, uh, this eyeball, and I'm just gonna draw a basic shape around it and then say track forward. So it's gonna analyze, do its thing, and uh, it's doing a pretty good job at sticking that information to that uh, eyeball. So. We're gonna export our tracking data and there's a few options. I'm just gonna cover 
my eyes here because, uh, you know, I don't like persistent staring like that. Okay, so ignore the first two. Just select the last one just to transform data. I'm probably going to go over uh, the rest of these options and all of Mocha in an, uh, another tutorial. But for now, all we need is this type of data. Copy to clipboard, and then we're going to go back into After Effects. So now that we've copied all that tracking data information, we can create a new null object in After Effects and then go under Edit, Paste, or hit Command-V. And this is going to paste all of that information onto this null. As you can see here, our null now has uh, sort of an animation to it. So we can see that it's sticking right to the eye as we scroll through here. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. All right, so now that we have our tracking data, let's end this staring contest and let's start adding some black evil eyes. So I'm going to create a new solid. I'm going to make it black. And then I'm going to momentarily turn it off. And we're going to create a mask that matches the shape of our eyeball. Turn it back on. And uh, we have this, this black thing on our face. We want to parent it to our newly created null object. And now that, that black solid is going to follow our eyeball. Now obviously it still looks a little bit weird because uh, we need some motion blur. But just make sure that the mask is also following the shape of your eyeball because it can be perfectly tracked. But your face is not a, uh, a rigid thing. It changes, it rotates, it shifts around. So make sure you're following that up with your mask. So let's go ahead and track the other eye and get that over with. So let's go back into Mocha and we're going to lock our previous layer that we created in Mocha and we're going to create a new one. So I'm not going to start from the beginning here because there is quite a bit of motion blur in the beginning as I've noticed before. So I'm going to start in the middle here. I'm going to grab my same Bezier, Bezier, Bezier tool and I'm going to make a shape around my right eyeball and I'm going to track backwards this time. So once we do that, we have to go back to our um, original position here, and there we go, and then track forward. It's weird how I'm staring at myself and I'm making myself uncomfortable. So again, export tracking data, select last option, copy to clipboard, go back into After Effects, and now we have to create a new null object for our right eye. So I'm going to right click, new, null object. And now I'm going to show you something. If I paste my information right now, now that my timeline indicator is in the middle of my, um, of my timeline, uh, you're going to see something weird happen. So if I go ahead and do that, we're going to see that if I hit you on my keyboard, we only have information from this point on. And that is because you have to bring your playhead all the way to the beginning when you're pasting keyframes from Mocha. So we're going to do the same thing again, uh, creating a new solid, making it the shape of our eyeball here. then feather the mask, and then parent that solid to our other null object. So I'm going to apply some motion blur for this solid as well. So this is already creepy in itself, but I wanted to take it a step further and make it a fully reflective eyeball like, like they somewhat are in real life. So what I suggest doing is go on Google Images and get some reference pictures of eyeballs, or get really, really close to, to strangers when you're walking around in public and just examine their eyeballs. Just get really, really close to them. You know, you might have to open up their eyes a little bit just to just to look at everything. And um, you know, you're gonna notice that the black part of their pupil is is black, and it's the most reflective part of the eyeball. So you kind of want to think if the whole eyeball is black, then it might be as reflective as someone's pupil. So let's go back to our project and add some reflections. So there's two different ways that I added a reflection to these black eyeballs. One is to make a new solid and make it the color of any highlight in your scene. And then just start drawing some basic shapes, you know, make it like round shapes and uh, just do circles, pretty much just random lines that are slightly curved. And then you can just feather all those masks out, then create some other masks, just add as much detail as you want. So essentially you're just painting back in the reflections of the environment. Now another thing that I did in the original example was uh, showing the victim's face in the reflection of, of this creature's eyes. So in order to do that second type of reflection, uh, we need to bring in a clip of something that's in front of uh, these, these black eyeballs. So in my case, there is this creature's victim tied up to a chair and it's directly in front of his face. So essentially that's what its eyeballs would somewhat reflect. Then I'm going to duplicate my right eye layer 
and it's pretty much going to act as an alpha mat for the video layer of the victim. So I'm going to scale it down and position that video clip right where the eyeball is. So we don't have any type of mat options and if that happens to you just go down to this toggle switches mode button and it will reveal all those other hidden options. And select alpha mat of that eyeball layer and you can see that it does the trick. Now our video is within the eyeball. So that's exactly what we want. Now of course it's not perfect yet. We need to uh, apply a few effects to this video clip so that our eyeball is not just a perfect flat mirror. So one of the first effects that I'm going to add is an effect called sphere eyes. If I drag this into my uh, victim's clip and I increase the radius of the sphere, you can see that it's sort of, well, it's, it's sphere sizes, sphere physicists, sphere spherizes, I don't know. It, it makes it round. So that sort of adapts the clip to the roundness of an eyeball. Then we can apply some brightness and contrast and, you know, decrease the brightness and increase the contrast so that the highlights of whatever clip you selected really pop while everything else is really dark. And then of course you can decrease the opacity and uh, everything beyond this point is really up to you. So you can play around and see what works best with your clips. So if you've seen the short and you're wondering how the hand to face grab effect was done, it pretty much follows the same techniques that we just explored. So this is the scene, there's a bit of tension between the two and then he grabs the face and obviously the first part of the clip is a split screen and now this is actually my own hand safely grabbing my own face. Um, I wouldn't trust anybody else grabbing my face that way. So what I did for the creature's hand is I added an adjustment layer with a mask that follows its hand and then I just simply added a uh, desaturation effect and I did the same thing with the face. So when he starts sucking the life out of my face, uh, I pretty much did the same thing, create an adjustment layer that follows my face and then I just added a hue and saturation, decreased the saturation and that was pretty much it. Alright, so for the eyeballs, pretty much the same thing was done. Uh, instead of creating a black solid, you create an adjustment layer and you make that eyeball bloody red with some curves effect. And then what I did is I added a second mask, a circular mask around the uh, pupil part of the eyeball. And then I animated that mask expansion so that it seems like that bloodiness is, is, is growing onto the eyeball. So you can see that it's very similar. All you have to do is just learn how to track things onto people's faces and then you can do anything you want. Also, if you're enjoying the music or the soundtrack of the short film that we're talking about, stick to the end because I'm gonna show you a way to get it for free to use in your own videos. Alright guys, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm really excited because there are a ton of new videos and tutorials coming out that I think you guys are going to really enjoy. And one of them is a secret technique that I use to improve any lighting in any shot. Now of course it's not really a secret since I'm sharing it with you guys and I don't really believe in keeping things to myself that could be used to potentially help others. So we're going to be looking at that next week. And then after that, we're going to take a look at probably the most overdone effect in After Effects, and that is cloning. So as you can tell by the background here, I am in Ortigia in Sicily, in Italy, and that is because I'm visiting family, but also because I'm launching a series of new exciting projects that I cannot wait to share with you guys. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do, because I'd love to have you with me along this crazy journey. Anyways, my name is Chris Trini for Chris Card Productions. I'll see you next time.